I bet you've been in this situation. You decide to lose weight. You do your research. You calculate your maintenance calories. You create a calorie deficit of 500 calories. You track everything in your app. You eat salads while your friends eat pizza. You drag yourself to the gym four times a week. You do this for two weeks. You're tired. You're hungry, but you're motivated. You wake up, step on the scale, and nothing. The number is exactly the same. Or worse, it's up by half a kilo. That feeling of frustration, it's not just yours. I've been there. My clients have been there. It is the single most defeating, demotivating experience in a fitness journey. It's the number one reason people give up. They throw their hands up and say, see, it doesn't work for me. My metabolism is broken or calorie deficits are a lie. And that is the most painful part because they aren't lazy and they don't lack willpower. They were just aiming at the wrong target. Here is the scientific truth. You are not broken. The law of thermodynamics has not failed. But your application of that law has a leak. Your deficit is not a deficit. Today, I'm breaking down the four hidden reasons this happens. The scientific reasons why you're eating less but not losing weight. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to find the leak in your plan and finally, finally break your fat loss plateau. First, let's establish one fact, because without this, nothing else matters. The only way to lose body fat is to be in a sustained calorie deficit. This isn't a diet theory. This is the first law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes form. Think of your body fat as a savings account of stored energy. Calories in, food, are your deposits. Calories out, TDE, are your withdrawals. This is the energy you burn just by living, breathing, moving, and exercising. To reduce the balance in that savings account, your body fat, your withdrawals must be greater than your deposits. There is no other way. So, if this law is true, why isn't it working? Because the problem isn't the law. The problem is the numbers. The numbers you are using for calories in and calories out are wrong. And it starts with the single biggest reason. Reason one, you are eating more than you think. The misreporting error. This is the one nobody wants to hear, but it is the most common culprit. You are not eating in a deficit because you are consuming more calories than you are tracking. We are all, as humans, terrible at estimating. A landmark review in the New England Journal of Medicine found that when people self-report their food intake, they consistently under-report it. On average, participants in diet studies reported eating 400 to 500 calories less than they actually were. And this isn't a moral failure. You're not lying to your app. It's subconscious. It's human nature. These are the hidden calories that erase your deficit. Where do they hide? 1. Oils and fats. This is the number one offender. You track the chicken and broccoli, but you don't track the two tablespoons of olive oil you cooked it in. That's 240 calories completely untracked. 2. Sauces and dressings. That healthy salad is great, but the half cup of creamy Caesar dressing you put on it? That's another 300 plus calories. Ketchup, mayonnaise, peanut butter. These are incredibly calorie dense. 3. Liquid Calories Your morning latte with whole milk and sugar. That fresh orange juice. That recovery smoothie. These can easily pack 200, 
400 calories that we drink without even thinking about. 4. The Bites, Licks, and Tastes The bite of your partner's croissant. The harmless cookie at the office. The peanut butter left on the spoon. These add up. You calculated a 500-calorie deficit, but 150 calories from cooking oil, 200 from your latte, and 150 from salad dressing, and bam! Your 500-calorie deficit is gone. You are at maintenance, and you don't even know it. Reason 2. Your calories out has decreased. Metabolic adaptation. Okay, but let's say you are a tracking expert. You weigh everything. You know your calories in is accurate. You still might not be losing weight. Why? Because the calories outside of the equation is not static. It changes. This is called metabolic adaptation or adaptive thermogenesis. Your body is an incredibly smart survival machine. It doesn't know you're trying to get a six pack for summer. It thinks you're in a famine and you're starving. So it fights back to protect you. When you consistently diet, two things happen. One, you weigh less. A lighter body burns fewer calories. A 90 kilogram person burns more calories just existing than a 70 kilogram person. Your metabolism slows down simply because there's less of you to maintain. Two, your body becomes efficient. It learns to do the same work for fewer calories. Your hormones shift. Leptin, the I'm full hormone, drops. Ghrelin, the I'm hungry hormone, goes up. Your thyroid, which controls metabolism, slows down production. The result? Your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure, drops. When you started, your maintenance might have been 2,500 calories. So you ate 2,000 to lose weight. But after three months of dieting, your body has adapted. Your new maintenance is only 2,200 calories. Now, your 2,000 calorie diet is only a 200 calorie deficit. Fat loss slows to an absolute crawl. This isn't a myth. It's a documented survival mechanism. Reason three, your NEAT has collapsed. This is part of metabolic adaptation, but it's so important we need to treat it as its own reason. Your calories out, TDEE, is made of four parts. Your BMR, the thermic effect of food, your exercise, and the biggest variable of all, NEAT. NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. It's every calorie you burn that isn't formal exercise, sleeping or eating, fidgeting your leg, tapping your pen, taking the stairs, doing laundry, walking the dog. NET is hugely important. Studies from Dr. James Levine at the Mayo Clinic found that the difference in NEAT between two people of similar size can be up to 2,000 calories per day. Here's the problem. When you are in a calorie deficit, you have less energy. You feel tired. So what do you do subconsciously? You stop moving. You take the elevator instead of the stairs. You lie on the couch instead of doing chores. You fidget less. You talk with your hands less. Even if you force yourself to go to the gym for one hour, your total 24-hour movement has plummeted. Your NEAT collapses, and this can shrink your calories out by hundreds of calories, completely stalling your progress. Reason four, the scale is lying to you. You are losing fat. This is the fourth and final reason, and it's the most psychological. It's possible you are doing everything right. You're in a real deficit. You are actually losing body fat, but the scale isn't reflecting it. You have to understand, your body weight is not your body fat. Your weight on the scale is the sum of everything. Your fat, muscle, bones, organs, all the water in your system, all the food in your gut, and your stored glycogen. And that number fluctuates wildly from day to day based on four things. One, sodium and water. Did you have a high salt meal last night? Your body will hold on to extra water to balance it. Just one liter of retained water weighs one kilogram, 2.2 pounds. The scale will be up, but you didn't gain fat. Two, glycogen. Did you eat more carbs yesterday? For every one gram of glycogen, stored carbohydrates, your muscles save, they pull in three to four grams of water. This is why people lose five pounds on a low carb diet in one week. It's just water weight. Three, stress. Had a terrible week at work, bad sleep? Your body produces cortisol. 
Cortisol is famous for causing water retention. Four, muscle gain. If you are new to lifting weights, you can be in a state of body recomposition where you are slowly building muscle and losing fat at the same time. You could lose one pound of fat and gain one pound of muscle. The scale doesn't move, but you look completely different. You could have lost 0.5 kilograms of fat this week, but because you had a salty dinner and are stressed, you're holding one kilogram of water. You step on the scale and you are up 0.5 kilograms. You think it's not working and you quit right when you were succeeding. So how do we fix this? How do we break the plateau? It's a three-step solution. Step one, the seven-day audit. Find the end leak. Don't guess. Measure. For one week, become a meticulous food accountant. Weigh everything with a food scale. Your oils, your sauces, your peanut butter, your fruits. Track your drinks. This isn't forever. This is a seven-day data collection period to find the hidden calories that are erasing your deficit. Step two, reset your out. Fight adaptation. Your old maintenance calories are wrong. Recalculate your TDEE based on your new, current body weight. But more importantly, consider a diet break. A 2017 study called the Matador Study had one group diet continuously for 16 weeks. They had another group diet for two weeks, then take two weeks off, eating at their new maintenance, and repeated this. The result? The diet break group lost more fat, regained less weight after, and showed less metabolic adaptation. Taking a planned break can actually speed up your long-term results. Step three, defend your NEAT and change your metrics. You must protect your non-exercise movement. Set a daily step goal, 8,000 to 10,000 steps. Make this non-negotiable. It's more important than your cardio session. Take the stairs, park farther away. And finally, stop trusting the scale. Use better tools. Take progress photos once a week. Use a tape measure for your waist. How do your clothes fit? These are a much better indicator of fat loss than a random number on a scale. I understand that feeling. When you put in all the work and the scale doesn't move, it feels like a personal betrayal. It feels like your body is broken. But I promise you, it is not. You are not broken. The laws of physics are not broken. Your strategy just needed an adjustment. Fat loss isn't a four-week sprint. It's a long-term process of collecting data and making adjustments. You are a scientist in the experiment of your own body. There is no magic pill. But there is science, and now you have it. The key isn't to be perfect every day. The key is to be consistent and honest with your data and to be patient with your body. Now, I want to hear from you. What was the number one hidden calorie you discovered in your own diet? Was it cooking oil? Was it your morning coffee? Comment below. I want to know your story because your discovery might be the aha moment that helps someone else who is struggling right now. If this video helped you understand why your fat loss stalled, please like and subscribe to Quivo. We're here to give you the science-backed truth, no myths, to help you build a stronger, healthier life. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.